The Vatican is renowned for its incredible culture, architecture, and monuments, as well as being the seat of the papacy. It is also a hub of controversy, which called Vatican Archives has its fair share of dark secrets that make Catholics around the world shudder. Among those mysteries, there must be a message from Our Lady of Fatima. Her secret remained hidden for decades, opening up many theories about her presence and what she really wanted to say. Why was Sister Fatima's secret kept secret for so long? And yet the Vatican archives are also said to be Pandora's box, where all of the church's darkest and most unbelievable secrets are hidden. So what are those secrets? Join us to explore through the video below. And before that, I have a small question to ask you about Our Lady of Fatima, to see what you know about this nun story. Try answering the following question. What event is associated with Our Lady of Fatima? A. Apparitions to shepherd kids in Portugal. B. Canonization of St. Fatima. C. Discovery of religious artifacts. D. Establishment of a religious order in Fatima. Time to think. Um, I don't know if this question is difficult for you, but I think not. Because it seems that every one of us Christians has heard the name of this nun at least once. It's just that we don't really understand the mystery hidden behind her appearance. 53 miles of shelving, 35, triple zero volumes of catalog, 12 centuries worth of documents. Housed in one of the most iconic bastions of religion and culture ever, the Vatican's secret archives are the stuff of historical legend. But their existence is absolutely real. Just the name invokes the mystery and pageantry of the Catholic Church and prompts the more imaginative to come up with theories about what might lie within. The archives indexes are not public and are only accessible to scholars once they are 75 years old. And they are housed in a fortress like part of the Vatican. Three secrets of Our Lady of Fatima, the controversial third secret of Fatima, is believed to be a secret document hidden within the archives. In 1917, three children from Portugal received prophecies, one of which was witnessed by thousands of people. People. It wasn't until 2000 that the Vatican revealed the so-called third secret of Our Lady of Fatima, which for decades has kept this shrine of the Virgin Mary at the center of conspiracy theories and doomsday cults. At that time, Cardinal Angelo Sedano, the Vatican Secretary of State, explained that the one concealed part of the prophecy said to have been revealed to three Portuguese shepherd children by an apparition of the Virgin in 1917 was a vision of an attempt to kill a pope. It's Pope John Paul II. First, we will talk about the three secrets that Our Lady of Fatima revealed to the three shepherd children. The first secret was a vision of hell that was very shocking to three young children. After that, the children prayed sincerely for the conversion of sinners. Even though this vision happened only once, it was enough for us to remember forever. This greatest prophecy reminds us that there are demons and there are souls falling into the terrible sea of fire with cries of pain and cries of despair. It causes terror and makes them tremble with fear. The second secret is the secret of prophecy. Mary told the shepherd children that if people continue to offend God, World War II will occur. She also announced the fall of the communist regime and the resulting persecution of the church and the pope. To avoid these three disasters, Our Lady suggested establishing worldwide devotion to the Immaculate Heart of Mary and the Pope himself, consecrating Russia to her, which Pope John Paul II did in March 1984. The third secret of Fatima is also the secret that made the Pope decide to announce it. Accordingly, the pastor saw a bishop in white clothes, which symbolizes the Pope, killed along with priests, monks, and lay people from many walks of life. Believers say two of the Fatima secrets were revealed in writing by Lucia in the 1940s. The third secret was put in a sealed envelope and sent to Rome and still remained there until 64 years after 1917. In 1981 at St. Peter's Square, a man wearing a white shirt full of energy at the age of 60 held a blonde girl in his arms and handed it back to her parents. Suddenly, gunshots rang out. Unbelievable. The Pope collapsed into the arms of his secretary. The white car rushed into the Vatican City. Then there were the minute by second races with death at Gemelli Hospital, the prayers of believers around the world, and the glimmer of hope after a complicated surgery. 
64 years after the Virgin Mary's appearance at Fatima, a hand deflected a bullet and saved the Pope's life from a hand that wanted to kill him. A Turkish gunman shot the Pope as John Paul drove through a crowd in 1981 on the anniversary of the 1917 apparition. Among the explanations the gunman gave prosecutors at a trial in 1985 was that his attempt was connected to the third secret of the Madonna of Fatima. During John Paul's first visit to the shrine in 1982, on the first anniversary of the assassination attempt, a knife-wielding Spanish priest tried to kill the Pope, but was wrestled to the ground by security officers. John Paul has always credited the Virgin of Fatima with saving his life. After he visited the shrine in 1982 to give thanks for his survival, a bullet extracted from his body was placed alongside diamonds in a gold crown worn by a statue of the Virgin. In 1991, on the 10th anniversary of the attack, he returned again to give thanks for his life, as well as for the collapse of communism. Which believers say the Virgin of Fatima also predicted in 1917. The secret a few days after he was elected in 1978. He did not announce it himself at the moment he knew it existed, said his spokesman, because he was personally involved. Vatican officials did not say why the secret was not revealed sooner after the assassination attempt in 1981. You know, there is a thread running through these three secrets. The invitation to sinners to repent and convert, because their evil deeds are the main cause of crime in the world. This is the eternal message of the message of Fatima. There is another message about forgiveness most clearly expressed through Pope John Paul II, the victim of assassination. Four days after his assassination, on Sunday, May 17, 1981, the window of the Pope's office in the Apostolic Palace was empty, without him appearing like every other Sunday. But the voice of Pope John Paul II was transmitted via radio to the faithful present and saint. Peter's Square, reciting the Hail, Queen of Heaven. In a weak voice, recorded from his hospital bed, Pope's first words after being shot were, I pray for my brother, the one who attacked me, whom I sincerely forgive. United with Christ, priest and victim, I offer my sufferings to the Church and to the world. On December 27, 1983, Pope John Paul II went to Rabibia prison in Rome, entered Ali Aga's cell and hugged the young man who wanted to kill him. A documentary made four years after the assassination published all the images of this touching encounter. There is no voice because no one can come close and hear what they say to each other. The image is touched with a message of forgiveness for everyone. Some claim that if the full true secret had been revealed in 1960, much less fully told in 2000, there would have been many decades of millions and millions praying for God's people and leaders. The warning could have led to repentance. Abuse victims could have been consoled, honored, and treated tenderly toward healing. Seminary training and leadership could have been boldly sifted and humbly, righteously steered and sifted. And new courage and watchfulness could have been infused into both holy lady and ecclesiastical leaders alike. Most of all, we have failed the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit and grieved the heart of the Good Shepherd. Step more into the Vatican archives. Vatican secret archives contain some of the Catholic Church's most impressive treasures, documents that date back from the 8th century. But until 1881, not even scholars of Christianity were permitted access to the archive. That's when Pope Leo XIII, known as an intellectual who confronted the modernization of the late 19th century, opened the trove to researchers. These fascinating documents tell not just the story of the Church, but the rest of the world. One standout item is a letter from Mary, Queen of Scots, who was executed after being forced to abdicate her throne and serving nearly 20 years in custody. She was finally sentenced to death, to murder Queen Elizabeth I, her Protestant cousin. Begging for her life and slamming the heretics who would eventually kill her. The Pope did not intervene, and she was beheaded on February 8, 1587. Another priceless document literally changed the history of religion. It documents the Catholic Church's excommunication of Martin Luther, the German who inflamed Europe by turning his back on Catholicism and writing his 95 Theses, now seen as the document that sparked Protestantism. 
In response, Pope Leo X wrote Decet Romanum Pontificum, a papal bull that kicked Luther out of the Catholic Church. This freed Luther to start a church of his own, and the schism has defined much of world history since. The secret archives also hold an extremely secretive document, the minutes of the trials against the Knights Templar, known as the Chin and Parchment. It's the size of a dining room table, and it documents the trials of the Roman Catholic military order for things like blasphemous behavior and heresy during the Crusades. Thanks to an archival mistake, the parchment was lost for centuries and was only found in a box containing other documents in 2001. Now it's been correctly categorized and is available for researchers. When the sign-on parchment was made public in 2007, it effectively rehabilitated the legacy of the Knights Templar by proving that, unbeknownst to history, Pope Clement V actually absolved the group of heresy in 1308. These and other historical documents are stored near the Vatican Library in Rome. Like any archive, there are stacks and reading rooms. There's also a bunker, a fireproof underground structure designed to protect fragile documents from the elements and fire. There's even a school for clergy who study history. And because it's the Vatican, there's plenty of sacred art to peruse too who can visit the Vatican archives. Although the Vatican's secret archives is so famous, this is not a place where people can freely enter and exit to reveal the secrets that make them curious. Not anyone can access the archive. It's only open to scholars who undergo a thorough vetting process. In 1881, Pope Leo XIII opened the archives to only serious scholars, believing that common people shouldn't be allowed to view the notes exchanged and written by nobility or the Holy See. This meant that amateur historians nor students could ever view the documents. Scholars are to have their credentials renewed every six months and are only permitted to view up to three folders a day. By choosing from a catalog of items written in Italian or Latin, no photography is allowed in the study rooms, so most spend their time writing up notes on a computer. However, in recent years, the Vatican has become a bit more open with its secrets. In 2010, in response to increased public interest in the secret archives and myths perpetuated by Dan Brown's best-selling book, Angels and Demons, the Vatican's The Vatican's The Vatican's allowed journalists to tour it for the first time. In 2012, the Vatican Secret Archives put on a public exhibition of some of its most important documents in celebration of its 400th birthday. An exhibition called Lux in Arcana was open to curious members of the public public who could view 100 documents. While this only scratches the surface of the 80 kilometers of shelves in the archives, it was still a momentous occasion, and in 2019, Pope Francis announced that the Vatican will open its archives on Pope Pius XII and his connection to Hitler through World War II. This comes after much scrutiny that Pope Pius XII was working with the Nazis and the controversial silence from the Pope on the persecution of Jews at the hands of Hitler during an event commemorating the 80th anniversary of Pope Pius XII election to the papacy, Francis said he had given orders for the archive to be opened in March 2020. The church is not afraid of history, he told the group. Normally, things related to faith in the church should be made public for all parishioners to know. But why do people always hesitate before the secret archives? In 2005, Sergio Pagano, the prefect of the secret archives revealed why there has been reluctance to open all the archives. Pagano told that it's not a matter of courage, it's a matter of resources. Since the archive is so vast, Pagano said, it's a challenge to quickly process documents and make them available to historians. But often, he said, people clamor for the opening of the Vatican archives, almost as though to enter into a secret fortress by overcoming imaginary resistance. But when the door is open and the documents are available, those who seem to be at the gates don't show up or make almost a touristic visit. The prefect dismissed pressure to release documents about Pope Pius XII, calling it a strange phenomenon and implying that researchers were driven by a desire to take down the Catholic Church. Which brings us to what could be the most controversial documents in the secret archives, ones that relate to the ongoing sexual abuse scandal within the Church. It sounds terrible. But this is exactly the assumption that many people have made. As it turns out, every diocese has secret archives, too, and many have helped corroborate the Church's participation in the abuse. 
but documents at the Vatican's secret archives are only released once they're at least 75 years old. And the archive's true owner is not the church, but the pope. Though people can sue individual dioceses for their information, the church itself is equivalent to a sovereign nation and can do what it pleases. The pope is the only one who could release the documents early, and as it looks now, it could be decades before journalists, historians, and victims learn more about the Catholic Church's role in the abuse. But what is the truth? And whether these scandals are real or whether there is any more shocking information, the only thing we can do is wait for the Pope to reveal it. Other mysteries in Vatican secret archives, one of the most famous secrets stored at the Vatican archives is the mystery of Our Lady of Fatima, which we revealed to you at the beginning of the video. Now we will continue to discover more secrets hidden in this archive. The first one, Jesus does not exist. Sounds so ridiculous, but this rumor still exists. There are reports that the archives contain communication between Emperor Nero and St. Paul regarding the existence of Jesus. Some conspiracy theorists believe that the Vatican is hiding proof that Jesus Christ did not exist. But let me ask you, is this trustworthy? If Jesus really does not exist as they speculate and the Vatican is trying to cover this up, then why does the Vatican have to do so many things to strengthen people's faith in God? I think you should just hear about this theory and throw it to the back of your mind right away because it's too ridiculous. Second, evidence of extraterrestrial life. Rumors suggest that the Vatican holds proof of the existence of extraterrestrial life in the form of extraterrestrial skulls. Some sources say that the archives contain proof that the Pope is conspiring extraterrestrial beings to implant everyone on Earth with computer chips. The third secret is three secrets of Fatima, which I mentioned at the beginning of the video. Four, home to the largest collection of pornography, some conspiracy theorists believe that the Vatican archives contain the largest collection of pornography in the world. Copenhagen's Museum of Erotica confirms these speculations. This is another unbelievable theory. The Catechism teaches us many things. Among them, the Ten Commandments teach that you shall not commit adultery. Of course, I do not dare to assert that everyone in this world is good. I just want to repeat God's words. If anyone is going astray, please wake up and come back to God. He is waiting for you. The fifth one, they are controlled by the Illuminati. Some people believe that despite their dissolution in the medieval times, the Illuminati has solely built itself up with its members placed in some of the most powerful positions across the world. One such powerful office is the Vatican, where many of its prominent members are believed to be part of the Illuminati. It is home to a time machine, believed to have been built by an Italian scientist and priest, Father Pellegrino Maria Anetti, the chronovisor is a device that apparently allows people to view the future and past. Although there is no record of such a device, some people believe it is hidden somewhere in the archives. Those are exactly the theories that are said to exist mysteriously at the Vatican archives, but how much of it is true? Only God knows, the Pope knows, and the people in charge of the archives know. So what about you? Which theories do you believe in? dark secrets about the Vatican, but the mysteries don't stop there. Please continue to follow us to discover dark secrets about the Vatican. The reason why people call it dark secrets is because it not only contains secrets, but also secrets that challenge all of our beliefs and perceptions of faith so far. Our secrets that make us wonder about the morality and values of people and communities. Many people say if the church is pure and has nothing to hide, why not make this archive public? It carries with it religious, political, social, and economic connections. A large-scale network that we can hardly imagine. The church is pure, but if they possess secrets that could hold the survival of something in their hands, do you think they should go public? As I told you, these dark secrets can only be revealed by the person who holds them. What we hear and read now is just speculation. Now let's see what are those dark secrets. Number one, the chief exorcist of the Vatican performed over 100, triple zero thousand exorcisms. Although exorcism is believed to be a practice only seen in horror movies and is the Middle Ages, the practice continues to be alive in the Catholic Church. Father Gabriel Amorth is a late priest and served as the chief exorcist of the Vatican. He served for 60 years and is believed to have performed approximately 160,000 exorcisms. 
The exorcism rite, however, is not just limited to the late chief exorcist. It has been performed by various popes over the years. In 2018, BBC reported that the Vatican welcomed 250 priests from across the world to an annual workshop. Number two, the Vatican helped Nazi war criminals escape the Allied forces after the victory of the Allied forces in Germany to end World War II. The Nazis were forced to seek refuge outside Europe. Thousands of Nazis managed to escape to South American countries, specifically Argentina, Chile, and Brazil. Harvard researcher Gerald Steenecker wrote a book that shows travel documents pointing to the Vatican having helped the Nazis travel to these countries. Steenecker argues that it was done with the hope of reviving European Christianity and fear of the growing influence of the Soviet Union. The Vatican, however, has refused to comment on these claims. Number three, the Vatican made money from the Holocaust. In addition to aiding the escape of thousands of Nazis from Europe, the Vatican was also involved in helping smuggle Nazi looted art, golf, and other property belonging to Jewish families. Gerald Posner, an American journalist, says that Bernardino Nogara, the financial advisor to the Vatican, is believed to have been one of Nazi spies. He is believed to have instituted a horrifying scheme that allowed the Vatican to invest money in Italian insurance companies that kept the assets from the life insurance plans of the murdered Jewish families. Since the Vatican was an investor and not a direct insurer, they did not need to return any of the money made using the scheme. Number four, scandals of the Vatican Bank. The Vatican Bank, also called the Institute for the Works of Religion, has been involved in numerous scandals. The most controversial is their dealing with Hitler. Gerald Posner, a historian, points out that the Vatican received church tax from Hitler every year. A substantial amount of money was paid to this institute so that it cannot be tracked by Western banks. The institute was used to store billions of dollars, the details of which have never been publicly revealed. Number five, Vatileaks, a book named His Holiness was released in 2012 which is based on the leaked secret papers of Pope Benedict. The private documents were leaked by Benedict XVI's own butler to the author, Gianluigi Nuzzi. After reviewing these documents, an internal investigation was held. The investigation revealed that individuals who were not from the Vatican were blackmailing gay bishops since they had broken their celibacy vows. Pope Benedict XVI went on to resign from the papacy in 2013 due to this scandal. Number six, the Apostolic Penitentiary. The Apostolic Penitentiary is a secret tribunal that investigates so-called heinous crimes of individuals. It was supposedly found in 1,179 and was kept secret until 2009. Only the Pope can grant absolution to people brought to this tribunal. Examples of sins include attempting to assassinate the Pope, a priest exposing the sin or identity of a person who has confessed to them, and so on. The Pope acts as the head of this tribunal and is called the major penitentiary and can either offer absolution or let the automatic excommunication stand. Number seven, dead man on trial in 897 AD. The Catholic Church put a dead man on trial. Known as the Cadaver Synod, the posthumous trial of Pope Formosus was held by Pope Stephen VI, his successor. Formosus was accused of usurping the papacy despite being dead for seven months by that point. The body of the Pope was exhumed, dressed in ecclesiastical attire, and brought to the papal court for judgment. A deacon was even appointed to speak on the deed Pope's behalf. However, the Vatican's secret archives are not actually secret. The word secret comes from a misunderstanding of the Latin word secretum, or private. The archives were, and still are, designed to house the Holy See's official paperwork, along with correspondence and other information related to the Pope. As the secretive nature of the Catholic Church and the potential trove within have fueled years of wild speculation about what was inside. Even today, conspiracy theories abound over its contents, like wacky speculation that the Vatican is hiding extraterrestrial beings inside. The Vatican has been trying for years to debunk the idea that its vaunted secret archives are all that secret. It has opened up the files of controversial World War II, era Pope Pius XII, 
to scholars and changed the official name to remove the word, secret from its title. But a certain aura of myth and mystery has persisted until now. God could have become a man in our world and remained forever. The evil one has power in this world as we see and experience constantly. It has power precisely because we allow our freedom to continually separate ourselves from God. But because God himself adopted a human heart and thus steered human freedom towards good, the freedom to choose evil is no longer the final choice. 